Welcome to Live Life on Purpose with Jose and Jeff Feliciano from Feliciano Financial Group. In this podcast, brothers and certified financial planner professionals, Jose and Jeff, explain that money is just a tool to achieve the things you want in life, a tool to make the decision to live life on purpose. They draw from years of experience to demonstrate that when your money aligns with your goals, you can live a purposeful life. Because when your vision is clear, your decision is easy. Hello and welcome to Live Life on Purpose with Jose and Jeff Feliciano. Jose, how are you today? I'm doing wonderful. How about you? I'm doing fantastic. Jeff, how are you? Hey, life is good. All right. I know life is good. I know that I'm back with you guys, which makes my day fantastic. I am really looking forward to this podcast. The last podcast, you guys spoke about how you help plan and the biggest concerns of affluent families. And I told you, I self-confess that I'm not in that bracket yet. (laughs) I'm not a quote unquote affluent family, but this right here today, common IRA mistakes. I know that I'm probably making some of these possibly right now. So I'm excited to get into this, Jeff, and I know you're taking the lead on it, correct? Yeah. You know, I mean, at some point, all of us are going to have to face decisions on what we do with our retirement plans, whether it's a 401ks at work or profit sharing or individual accounts, self-employed accounts. Uh, Mm -hmm. But at some point, we have to make decisions on when do we roll it over? When do we convert to Roth IRAs? Just what decisions do we make? When do we make them? And then what are the things that people just tend not to think about or take into consideration? Okay. I know you've got eight or nine of these things to cover that are common mistakes. So where do we start? You know, one, I think let's start with just understanding the difference in IRAs. Basically, there's two. There's a traditional IRA. That's money that you can put in. You can put 6000 a year if you're under 50. You can put 7000 a year if you're over 50. Okay. And uh, you get the tax deduction now. All the money grows tax deferred inside of it. But later on down the road, when you decide to pull the money out, you pay taxes on all of it. Okay? Got it. The flip side, there's what's called Roth IRAs. Roth IRAs are just the opposite. You can put the same number, six, seven thousand a year, depending on age. Mm-hmm. Money you don't get a tax deduction now. However, whatever it grows to the next 10, 20, 30 years, you don't pay any taxes on any of the growth. So it's important to know the difference between the two so that way you can decide based on your age and your planning and what tax bracket you're in and see what makes the most sense, not just today but what makes the most sense overall. Yeah, in in your overall planning. So that leads me to what we say a lot on this podcast is that, listener, you need to talk to a professional. I know we'll give out some contact information at the end of the show here, but all these mistakes, you're going to provide kind of a guide on how to avoid these mistakes, but still it's all individualized. So people need to be reaching out and having this conversation with you. And real quick example is we like to tell stories. Either you pay the tax on the seed or the harvest So when you have a regular IRA, you're not paying tax on the seed, but when it grows to be a harvest and once you start taking the distributions, you pay tax on that. Mm -hmm. Whereas a Roth IRA, you go ahead and pay the tax on the seed, but when it does grow into a harvest, you don't have to pay taxes on the harvest. So sometimes you're doing a little bit of both, but it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Got it. All right. What's mistake number two? All right. So number two has to do with rollovers. A lot of people, we participate in company retirement plans most famously known as 401ks. Mm -hmm. When we do change jobs, when we retire, when we get laid off, forced into early retirement, there's decisions that you have to make with that money. So do we just leave it in the 401k or do we roll it to our own individual IRA so we can roll that money out to your own personal accounts? One of the things that I tend to see is people don't give enough consideration to what they do with the after-tax money. So uh, sometimes you're able to pick and choose inside that 401k, do you want to contribute pre-tax or do you want to contribute after-tax? Do you want to utilize the Roth feature or some you can just contribute after-tax? So when you go to roll that money out to your own individual retirement account, they give you a choice. What do you want to do with the after-tax monies? Mm. So you roll the pre-tax to an IRA. That way you don't pay any taxes on it. It can continue to grow tax-deferred. But the after-tax portion, they'll either send you a check with no taxes, and you can use it for whatever you want to, or you can roll that after-tax portion to a Roth IRA. And it's important to do so because that way all the earnings in the Roth IRA will eventually be tax-free. Yeah. Whereas if you leave it in there, 
it'll grow, but you'll pay taxes on that money. Got it. I see that a lot. I also see, be sure to check with your 401k provider. So there's sometimes there's companies that you may be 55, it may be 59 and a half rule, it may be at any time, but they will allow you to roll portions of the 401k out to your own individual retirement account. So if you have after-tax money, it just makes it even more important to do so, so you can fully utilize the Roth IRA features. And really adding to that real quick would be what we find is a lot of people have three or four 401ks from their previous employer, and mm. they're not really looking at that. So consolidating that and simplifying that process and, and combining your 401ks into an IRA can make things work more efficiently. Got it. All right. That makes a lot of sense. Plus, you don't have all these accounts hanging out there and it sounds pretty complicated if you have that situation. Yep, sure does. It's easy to invest it and forget it. And uh, yeah. I couldn't tell you how many times that people have old 401ks that they haven't rebalanced. They haven't looked at the funds. They couldn't tell you what it's invested in. And it's been years and years. But, you know, like Jose said, yeah, good idea to get them all rolled out, combine them into one, make your life a whole lot simpler. And it makes your decision making on the investment strategies a lot simpler. Yeah. I think another is taking money out too early. Mm. If you pull money out of an IRA, if you're under 59 and a half, you're subject to a 10% penalty plus taxes. So if we need to get hands on money, there's a couple of rules to be aware of. Number one, if I'm over 55 and I leave my job or change jobs, I can take a one-time distribution from my qualified plan, my 401k, before I roll it to an IRA and it avoids the penalty. So there's no penalty. They'll withhold the 20% taxes, but there's no penalty. Okay. okay. The second is we find that some people, they may want to start using their money to live off of. They may be 55, 57, really doesn't matter what age. And they just take distributions before 59 and a half and they're paying taxes and penalties and all of it. Ouch. There's another rule. There's a rule called 72T that you can take equal periodic distributions from that IRA. As long as you take it for at least five years or 59 and a half, whichever's greater, but you can take income as long as you don't change it, then all that income that you take for those five years or 59 and a half, there's no penalty. So you don't have to pay a penalty on the money that's coming out every year. Huh. Again, pre-planning. Yeah. Quick example. I just had somebody the other day had $800,000 in IRA and they're retiring at 55, just like Jeff had said. So what you can do is depending on what they need, you can split it to two IRAs and have one that's at 72T and the other one is a regular IRA that they don't need. So sometimes you could back it in and do some planning to make sure that you could take advantage of both. Wow. See, and that's, <laughs> and that's why you call a professional because I'd never heard that before. And that's a fantastic idea. That just goes back to what you need, but don't just take money out blindly. Mm-hmm. Because there's a lot of steps, there are things that you can do to save the penalty, the penalties for being under 59 and a half. There's another rule that's called the 60-day rule, that if you take a distribution from an individual retirement account, you can get that money back in within 60 days, and you won't be subject to penalty and taxes for that as well. I know that you guys have brought up beneficiaries before, and so now I'm really curious because you've, if somebody has multiple 401ks, I'm pretty sure you have to have a beneficiary on each one of those. And if you've got multiple, that means it's from multiple jobs, maybe 10, 20, 30 years ago. How do you make sure that your beneficiaries are all taken care of correctly? Well, that's a great point you just brought up. I keep giving examples here, but sometimes you have second marriages, third marriages, and people don't look at the beneficiaries of their IRAs. The intent was to have their kids taken care of, but they still have their ex-spouse mm -hmm. as a beneficiary. Or I think uh, the other episode we talked about some needs for life insurance sometimes. Sometimes you want to give the IRA to your kids and have a life insurance policy go to your spouse. So there's a lot of planning that needs to happen depending on what you want to accomplish. But common mistake, I would say, in that area is really verifying the beneficiary and make sure it's lined up what you're trying to accomplish. Can you change that at any time? You can. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you have a spouse that's the designated beneficiary and you change it to your kids, then of course your spouse just signs off on it. But that's not a problem when you have a game plan that includes your spouse. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, absolutely. All right. That's so interesting. All right. What's another one? The other one is 
just not contributing to IRAs or understanding the limits. Those limits change every year. So depending on your age, you can put six or 7,000 a year into an IRA and either deduct it or use the Roth feature. Mm-hmm. Some people will participate in 401ks. And they're contributing through work and they think, oh, I've got everything through work. I don't need an IRA. Well, in actuality, if we have money that's not intended for checking and savings and emergencies or not pre-planned for any kind of big expenses, then what do we do with that money? If we're investing in stocks and mutual funds and CDs and things of that nature, we're paying tax on money that we know we're not using. So it is important to see based on how much income you have, what's available through work, and see if we can qualify to do an IRA in addition to what we're doing through work, especially the Roth features, because there's not a lot of places in this world that we can put money in and whatever it grows to, we never pay a dime in taxes again. So in those years that we can participate, it's important that we do take advantage of those IRAs and Roth IRA limitation. So is it possible to be a part of a 401k at work and have an IRA and have a Roth IRA? Yes and no. So short answer would be, yes, you can have both. But if we're making contributions to an IRA, it's subject to the six or 7,000 a year, depending on age. So mm-hmm. I couldn't max out an IRA, 6,000, and max out a Roth. It's a cumulative number. Oh, okay. I have to do either one or half and half or some combination of. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense then. However, you know, if I rolled a 401k to an IRA and open a Roth, then I could have all three and contribute. Oh, there you go. Okay. That makes sense. And I would just add another common mistake would be your 60-day rule on a rollover. So let's say you leave an employer and you have a 401k, you don't roll that money into an IRA within 60 days and they send you a check and you end up spending that money. Some people don't realize that that check is your income for that year, plus a 10% penalty if you're under age 59 and a half. So anytime you take a check from your employer that's related to a 401k, you definitely want to roll it into an IRA within 60 days. Gotcha. So it doesn't automatically stay with the 401k then? If you decide to take it out of the 401k, they're going to send you a check. Gotcha. Okay. And a lot of times it'll be in the custodian of wherever you're going to roll it over to. But if you end up having it sent to you without a custodian or not no intention of rolling it to an IRA and you don't want to hit with those taxes, you want to make sure that you go find an IRA to contribute that money to within 60 days or you won't you'll have some uh, tax burdens that you didn't anticipate. Yeah, absolutely. That could push you up into another tax bracket completely. And then the penalty, that's a big whammy. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, no doubt. So uh, just understand if you ever roll a 401k to an IRA, you either do a direct rollover, checks payable to the IRA for the benefit of you. Way there's no taxes, everything's nice and clean. If you make the mistake of taking the distribution made payable to you, that you've got 60 days to get that money back into an IRA in order to avoid taxes and penalties. So make sure you understand that as well. And number three, if there's ever any after-tax money sitting inside qualified plans with the Roth IRA rules, you want to make sure that you roll the pre-tax to an IRA and any after-tax straight to the Roths. Gotcha. So there's another way you can have both those accounts open. And in one area of planning, just to add as I'm listening to Jeff, is Sometimes people, when they leave, they want to pay off their debt and they want to eliminate something that you know, sometimes they take too much money out of their IRA when they can actually take out some money in December for one tax year and then turn around and take some more money in January the next year so they can spread the tax burden over two years instead of one and to prevent to be in a higher tax bracket. So planning on what you're trying to accomplish, if you got debt to pay and you got 18% credit card debt, then it's, there's a strategy to do that to take advantage of your IRAs and eliminate debt but how you lay it out over the two-year period would make a big difference, or even a three- or four-year period. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, Jeff, a moment ago you said distributions, and I was thinking about RMDs, which I know that you've spoken about on this podcast before, but is that an issue? I mean, I know that it's, the age has changed from 70 and a half to 72 or something. You guys are the pros. Well, how about RMDs? Do people consider that? Sure. I see it all the time, especially when people have multiple IRAs. The way the math works these days is they take the total amount that you have in your IRAs, calculated as December 31st of the prior year, 
And based on your age and life expectancy, there's a mathematical equation that tells you, here's the minimum you have to take out. And they did change that to 72. The reason why that's important is sometimes we just forget. When there's multiple IRAs, they're all spread out. Did I take this one? Did I take this one? But the penalty is what's important because the penalty is if you didn't take it out, then the penalty is 50% of what you should have taken out plus whatever tax bracket you're in. So uh, it can be pretty substantial if you make that mistake. So make sure that you're looking at that somewhere after the end of the year. You know what the totals are in all the IRAs. You know what you need to take out for the year and then decide. Do you take it all out in one chunk in the beginning of the year? Do you wait till the end of the year? Do you divide it by 12 and just take out a monthly amount? But that's a big enough penalty to not make sure that you're doing it right. Somebody, I would assume nobody does that twice. I would hope they don't make that mistake twice. How do you guys help your clients with that? I mean, is this something that you guys take care of that you set an alarm? I mean, how do you help them stay on track? Yeah, so we try to meet with most clients twice a year. Somewhere January, February, March, it's a good time to recap the prior year, set goals for the year. What big expenses do we have coming up? For clients that are of age, calculating, all right, what was the total value in the IRAs? All right, what's the minimum distributions that we need to take throughout the year? We also have a process that starting in October, anyone that did not take their RMBs for the year, we get populated to a list and then we have more of a catch-all in that last quarter of the year just to make sure Mm -hmm. that money is coming out. And another scenario that we see quite often is really when it pertains to charitable contributions. I think a big mistake most people make is they give to church, they give to charities, and they just give out of their checking and savings accounts. What most people don't realize is if you want to give money and you do have an IRA, maybe it's better to give it directly from the IRA. So instead of paying taxes on it and then giving money, they can give money and the money that would have went to go pay taxes is actually enhanced and goes to the charity of choice. Wow, that's great. Because it is a tax-free. So the higher income tax bracket, the more important that is. Mm -hmm. All right. Are there any other mistakes you guys want to cover today? There's one coming up, you know, January 1st. We don't know if the Roth IRA rules are going to change, but there's some IRAs. You got four, five, six million dollars in the IRA. And a lot of questions that we're being asked is, should I roll some of that money into a Roth IRA? And what would the tax burden look like in 5, 10, 15 years from now? So we just have to run the math on it. And uh, do we anticipate taxes are going to go up? And let's just run the math on it. And should we pay taxes now on some of it? And then uh, the ideal of having a Roth IRA and an IRA is that, for example, if you take 50000 out of a Roth IRA and 50000 out of an IRA, then you're only paying income tax on 50000 which could benefit your Medicare considerations and things that will be taxed as Social Security. And uh, so there's other factors of other benefits. If you're under 65, you got health insurance issues to qualify for subsidies if there is any. But there's a lot more to it than just the IRA distribution itself. All right. Guys, this has been a lot of great information. I know that uh, hopefully people are listening to this thinking, okay, I really don't want to make that mistake, especially that 50%. I can't believe that, Jeff. That's still just, that's bugging me. I can't believe that they take 50% penalty. Uh, good gravy. All right. So if people listening to this are going, I need to avoid these mistakes, I know that you're open to conversations. What's the best way to get a hold of you? If you get questions about an IRA and what to do, and based on your situation, just give us a call at 903-533-8585. Uh, they'll schedule a time. And of course, if you want to email, just email Jeff at FelicianoFinancial.com or Jose at FelicianoFinancial.com or go to the website, FelicianoFinancial.com and just get in touch with us and we'll just visit over the phone and uh, see what your situation is and we'll know real quick if we can help. Fantastic. Jeff, any final thoughts for today's podcast? Yeah, I just want to emphasize different things are important to different people and uh, making the right decisions. If I can just encourage you to go get a second opinion, make sure you're visiting with someone and you're trying to take these things in considerations for you and your family. Yeah, that's a great idea. It's funny because I know that Jose, you and I spoke one time and you actually told me that you'll encourage your people that are sitting across the table from you, you know, when you guys are meeting for the very first time, hey, go get some other opinions. And uh, you're not shy about that because you want people to feel comfortable with the people that they're working with. And I appreciate that about you. You you have a very humble approach. Uh, Both you and Jeff do a fantastic job 
of making sure that people are comfortable with their situation and that they have a very clear vision of their future with all the planning you do. So I appreciate you guys. I appreciate the education that you provide me on this podcast as well. So thank you for that. And of course, our last thank you goes to you, the listening audience. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the Live Life on Purpose podcast with Jose and Jeff Feliciano. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when the guys come out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. This makes it really easy to share these podcasts with your friends and family. Again, thank you for listening today. For everyone at Feliciano Financial, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live life on purpose. Thank you for listening to Live Life on Purpose with Jose and Jeff Feliciano. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Feliciano Financial Group. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning.